the count is 2046. I know a lot of y'all saw that Greg Reese video. That's very true. He showed pictures out of my book, Anunnaki Homeworld, where I show the original Mayan mathematics was a calendar of 1,872,000 days. And the scholars should have kept the Mayan math arithmetic, but, in, but they did something stupid. And I think they did it on purpose. What, when, we got, when we got the date 2012, and everybody was told by the media that 2012 was the great end of the Mayan long count, my brothers and sisters, they lied to us. It's impossible because the Maya did not know a year of 365.25 days until very late in their history. The original calendar was only divisible by 360. And I've shown in many of my videos that every civilization in the world has documented that they changed their calendars from 360 to 365 days in a little one to three year window at 713 BC. For the entire world to do that means the sky had slowed down in its turnings. You can interpret that as the world slowed down orbiting the sun. I'm not going to interpret it that way. To me, the stellosphere slowed down just a little bit to make it give us the appearance that Earth had been moved out of its place. And this added 5.25 days to every year in the calendar. So remember, I believe we live, we live in a simulacrum. A simulacrum is a copy of something that is real. Are we living in the real, real universe? No, we're living inside a construct that it itself is located inside of a real universe. So it's able to, it's able to manipulate many things. It's able to mimic all kinds of phenomena that we interpret because we're so tiny. We interpret it as real phenomena that should, should I mean, be in a, in a heliocentric system. Everything is designed for us to, to conclude that we are in a heliocentric world system. This is why the moon is round. Although we've never seen the other side of the moon, it's a dead orbit. And this is impossible. If it's, if it's rotating around the world, somebody would have seen it. it. It would roll too, but it doesn't. It doesn't spin on an axis. That is a really good clue. Now, another good clue are the phases of the moon. Because if every, the sky is a stellosphere, the phases of the moon, which we interpret as the reflection of sunlight, means that the, room, the moon is round. Means that the sun would be round. Means that the phases of the moon are just different areas of reflected sunlight. This too is a clue. It means somebody wants us to think that our own world is also round when it's not. We're in a simulacrum. This is all simulated. And the greatest evidence is the fact the stars move in an arc of phi, 1.618 across the sky. They move in an arc. The intelligent observer would look at the sky, look at the faces of the moon, look at the roundness of the moon, look at the sun and know it's round too, and automatically conclude, because everything is moving, that they are also on a ball that's turning. Every bit of this phenomena is designed for you to believe. It's the smilogram. And it's, it's, it's what we're told as a child. So everything that we take in our informed field all of our life comports exactly with, the, with that, uh, that model. We prove it to our, it's a feedback loop. The more we believe it, the more that the model itself would produce phenomena to substantiate its veracity. This is how reality works. This is why errants are dangerous. Free thinkers are not wanted. Free thinkers are, are allowed and permissible by a society as long as they go with the status quo. But when free thinkers start taking a whole herd in another direction, that's when they get attacked. This is, this is just life. This is what happens. It means you're moving in the right direction. And, and this is why I am unfazed by anything that happens to me. I just am. 